Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a cone just like this one or this one using MATLAB 2020 revision B. So let's go to MATLAB. So a cone can be described by uh, two variables but we're going to be using three especially for this one. So the first variable is going to be the, the base radius, the second variable is going to be the cone height and the third variable is going to be the small radius at the tip. If you want a cone like this one, then all you have to do is specify the radius at the tip equal to zero. Okay, so we're going to call the radius at the base uh, uppercase R. Let's give it a value of one. The tip radius, let's give it a value of zero for now. And the height is going to be equal to, let's say two. Besides these two variables, we're going to be using two more variables that are used for the creation of the 3D object. One is to specify how many cross-sections the object is going to have, so let's say 10, and the number of uh, nodes per cross-section. Let's say 100. Okay, so before moving forward, I want to explain something. What we, what we are going to do is we're going to divide the cone into 10 cross-sections, which is what we're specified for our NCS variable. The first cross-section is going to be at the base, and the tenth cross-section is going to be at the tip. Between those two cross-sections, there's going to be eight more cross-sections. Since we know the, the values, the radiuses for the first and the last one, all we need to do is to find the local radiuses for the eighth that are in between. The way we're going to do this is we're going to look at the profile of the cone. You can see that if we start from here and go all the way to here, and join those two points with a line, we can see that it's a straight line. And a straight line has a function that we can use to find to find the value of the radius of each cross-section given the distance away from the origin. So if we call it, let's say this y and x, with my origin being halfway the height of the cone, that means that the radius of the base is going to be negative h over 2 away from the from the origin and my radius at the tip is going to be h over 2 positive away from the origin the height to this point is going to be equal to capital R and the, and, the, and the height to this point is R so you can see that the radius is going to be equal to the y coordinate of each of these points. So if each of these points represents one cross-section, then what we need to do is to specify the position of that cross-section and we can find its radius. So the equation for a, for a straight line is y is equal to mx plus v, where m is the rate of change and plus v is the shift in the vertical direction in this case. And we have two points. The point is negative h over 2 r and the point h2 uh, the radius at the tip. Now we're going to replace the x for negative h over 2 and the y for r and solve for b and do the same thing for this point over here. Here we have the two equations, b is equal to the radius at the base plus h over 2 and, the, and b is equal to the radius at the tip minus h over 2. Now we're going to equate these two equations because both are equal to b so we can just replace b with one of these two. Once we solve for m, we can see that the rate of change is equal to negative parentheses the radius at the base minus the radius at the tip over h. And here the rate of change is negative because we're going from a point that is higher than, than the, our final point, so the rate of change decreases, therefore it's negative. Now we replace m in our first, first equation, and we choose one of these two points, either one of them are going to work, in order to find b, which b is the shift in the vertical direction. And when we solve for b, we find that b is equal to one half times the sum of both radiuses. So we're going to start building this function in order to find those local radiuses. So here I am just going to change y for our local and I'm going to ch change x for c because I like c to be the, the axis along the length. Vector c is going to tell me the position of the cross-sections along the height of the cone. We can, we can specify them to be equally spaced. So lean space and the range goes from negative h over 2 to h over 2 and where the number of cross-sections ncs. Then we're going to specify the rate of change which was negative r minus 
r over h then b which was one half times r plus r and then we can put all of these together to find the to find the local radiuses okay so we can run this we're going to have a list of local radiuses that go from 1 which was the radius at the base to 0 which was the radius at the tip and all the ones in between are from the from the rest of the cross sections that we specified so we can plot these and we should get a straight decreasing line yeah there, there you go the total height is going to be 2 which is what we specified radius at the base is 1 and radius at the tip is 0 uh, we need to specify the angular position of each of the nodes in each cross section all of them are going to have the same angular position so we just have to create one vector with all the angular values and they can be equally spaced the range is going to go from 0 to 2 pi which is the whole circumference and it's going to be n nodes the next step is to create an array of the local radiuses and the uh, angular position of each of the of the nodes in each cross-section since the all the nodes in one cross-section are going to have the same radial value and all the cross section all the nodes in all the cross-sections are going to have the same angular position we, what we can do is create a grid with the theta values and the local radiuses we do that using the mesh grid function which if you don't know how to use it, I'm going to leave a link for the document documentation in the descri description of this video. Now, if we run this, you see that now we have uh, two arrays. Instead of being vectors, we have two arrays, which are 10 by 100. We have uh, 10 cross-sections. Each row is one cross-section and 100 nodes. Each column is one node. So you can see that for the first cross-section, all the values are going to be, the radius is going to be 1, which is good. All the points have the same radius because it's a circle. And for theta, you can see that all the rows are repeated because the angular position doesn't change. All we're changing is uh, the scale of the cross-section, and we do that using the radius. Next, we can create uh, transform the, uh, these polar coordinates to Cartesian. Using the pole to cart function, here we have the two outputs, I want x and y, and the inputs are going to be first the angle, theta, and then the, the radius. Now let's just plot this, just to check that everything is working fine. Here with this you can plot each of, these, of the cross-sections individually. If you see, so yeah, so you can see these uh, the cross-sections of the cones are seen from the top. You can see that the cone starts uh, with a cross-section equals to zero and decreases until it reaches a single point here it converges into a single point which is the tip the next thing is to do is to create another grid with the c values because the c has to also be an array of 10 by 100 all the cross-sections all the points inside a cross-section are going to be the same distance away from the origin the first cross-section all the 100 nodes in that cross-section are going to be negative of one distance away from the origin so what we can do is transpose this uh, vector, make it a column vector, and then multiply it times 100, or times the number of nodes that, that we have. So c is equal to breadmat, which is the function we're going to be using to repeat the columns 100 times, or number of nodes that we specify. The first input is going to be the vector, or the array. The next input is going to be how many columns are going to be repeated. No columns are going to be repeated, so just one. Then how I'm sorry, how many rows? The next argument is how many columns, which is going to be n nodes times. Okay. If we run this, we're going to get... Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot here to transpose the, the vector. Yeah, we get 10 by 100. You can see that the, that the distance values are repeated for all the rows. And now that you have those three arrays, you can plot this using the sort function. Here you have the cone. We still have to cover the cone here with a lid, with a circular lid, but it's looking, it's looking fine. It's looking, it's looking good so far. In order to cover the cone, 
we're going to do is the same thing we did for the cylinder which is create a single point here in the center in the central axis of the cone that's going to connect to all the points in the first cross section so if you see here if my x coordinate is uh, this axis and the y coordinate is this axis if we place the that point in the center the coordinates are going to be zero so all we have to do is create a vector of zeros that is going to have a number of columns equals to the number of nodes and then we have to add it to the top of our x y and z arrays so we can say x is equal to the first vector that we're going to create is of zeros so zeros we want one row of zeros and it's going to have the number is going to be in nodes number of columns and below it we're going to place x the other x we can do the same thing for y and for z is a little bit different for z the z coordinate of that point at the base is going to be a distance of negative h over 2 away from the from the origin so negative h over 2 times now we're going to multiply times a vector of ones which is again going to have uh, one row and n nodes columns and below it we're going to play c correct let's see let's see how it looks yeah looks fine it's covered now what would happen if here i had a 0 0.5 so i don't have a, a, sh a sharp tip you can see that now we're missing the lead at the top so we have to do the exact same thing but at the top so we can do that underneath the array so we are another item which is going to be zeros same thing here in fact we can just copy because the point here is going to be again at x equals zero and y equals zero but c is but it's going to be equal to h over two so copy here there and it's going to be the same thing but positive and if we run this there you go it's a proper code now now if you want to export this to stl in order to do some cfd fea i don't know 3d printed you can use the this surf to stl function that you can find it on mathworks you can download it from there you have to put it on the same directory so the way that you use it is surf to STL, the first argument is going to be the name, let's call it cone, dot STL, you have to add the extension, and the next three arguments are going to be the, the arrays. You run it, and you get the STL file right here. Now here's the final result, here you can see the, the mesh, how it looks. Yeah, it looks fine. Now one last thing is if uh, you can orient the cone any way you want if you want the cone to be horizontal you can replace sorry not here here you can replace z with x you run it again and you can see now it's horizontal if you want the tip to be pointing towards the other side then then just add a negative to the first input there you go Okay, so I hope that this video was useful to you, and if you have any questions, I'm, uh, leave it in the comments of this video, I'm going to try to answer them as best as I can.